Okay, here's the next quote and then folks, so this is questions 21 to 30 of May 2017, paper 1, and this time it's time zone 2. So 21, which is correct about reaction mechanisms? Uh, a species that is zero order does not take part in the reaction. Well, that's a nonsense. It just means that the species that is zero order uh, takes part in a step after the rate determinant step. So you still need it for the reaction, but it comes in after the rate determinant step or the slow step. So not that one. A catalyst does not take part in the reaction. Well, it does take part in the reaction. It's just it remains unchanged by the end of it. Think of it inserts into bonds and then reattaches uh, things differently uh, and then looks you no know, different at the end, but it has taken part. Otherwise, it just wouldn't work. So it's not that. Reactants in a fast step before the slow step are included in the rate expression. Well, that sounds good to me because anything in or before the slow step or the rate determinant step is in the rate equation. So that looks good to me. Reactants in a fast step after the slow step are included in the rate expression. Well, no. Anything after, any reactants after the rate determinant step uh, are not in the rate expression. So we're going with C. Which variable affects the equilibrium constant? Kc. You've just got to remember this and you've got to really sort of know that it's temperature. Okay, so it's temperature affects Kc. None of these affect Kc. Pressure and concentration will affect the equilibrium position and give you a new set of concentrations, but when put into the equilibrium expression, you'll get the same value of Kc. A catalyst doesn't affect the equilibrium position or Kc because it speeds up both reactions equally. Okay, but temperature is the only thing which changes Kc. Remember that. Uh, 23, components X, Y, and Z are mixed together and allowed to reach equilibrium. Uh, the concentrations of X, Y, W, and Z in the equilibrium are 4 to 1 to 4 and 2 moles per decimal cube, respectively. There's our uh, reaction equation. What is the value of the equilibrium constant Kc? Well, Kc, remember, is products over reactants, and then it's raised to the power of this stoichiometry. So it's going to be W squared, because there's two of them, times Z, divided by uh, X times Y squared because it's two y's. So what is w? So that is uh, 4, yeah, 4 squared times 2, uh, which is z, and then we're going to divide that by 4 times 1 squared. So that's basically 16 times 2, that's uh, 32, because 4 squared is 16 times 2 32. 4 times 1 squared, well 1 squared is still just 1, so it's divided by 4, so that's 32 divided by 4, which is 8. So our answer is d. Uh, 24, which of the following does not react with dilute HCl? Uh, well, here's our uh, reactivity series. Uh, we've got uh, sodium carbonate. Well, that does react with HCl. You'll get sodium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. So it's not that one because it's a base. Copper, well, copper's a metal. And if we look at our reactivity series, we know copper's very unreactive and it's below hydrogen. If it's below hydrogen, it means it does not react with acid. So copper's looking good. Uh, zinc, zinc is a more reactive metal, it will react with acid, it's above hydrogen, so it's not zinc, and copper oxide again is a base, so it will react with acid, you'll get copper chloride plus water, so B is our right answer, the very unreactive metal, copper. Uh, which of the following is correct? A weak acid is a proton donor. Uh, well, yes, that's true. And its aqueous solution shows good conductivity. Well, no, it doesn't because it's got a low concentration of ions because it only partially ionizes. So, for example, if you've got ethanoic acid, it's going to be an equilibrium where you'll get some ions, but most of it will be over this side, so it's not a good conductor. A weak acid is a proton donor. Yes, that's correct. Uh, because it's donating a proton here. And its aqueous solution shows poor conductivity. That looks good to me. Uh, let's just rule out the others. A weak acid is a proton acceptor. Well, just, no, it's not. That's a base. That's a bronsted lowery base. So it's not those. And again, it wouldn't be that one, but it would be that one. So B is our correct answer. Which type of bond is formed when a Lewis acid reacts with a Lewis base? Well, remember all bronsted lowery acids and bases are sort of can be considered as Lewis acids and Lewis bases. So if we consider, for example, uh, just ammonia, which is a lone pair of electrons, well, that can then form uh, a coordinate bond with a hydrogen ion to form the ammonium ion. And this would be our Lewis base because it's an uh, electron pair donor. This would be our Lewis acid because it's an electron pair acceptor. And then what we formed is basically it's a coordinate bond, which A-level call it sometimes a, a dative covalent, but it is a covalent bond. It's a shared pair of electrons. Remember, once it's formed, it's equal in strength and length to the, the other three NH bonds. So we're going to go with covalent. 
It's not an intermolecular force such as a dipole-dipole or a hydrogen bond, and it's not a double bond. So it is basically just a covalent bond because it's sharing a pair of electrons, it's just they come from one of the bonding atoms. 27, what is the order of increase in acidity of the following acids? Well, we've got uh, acid chloroethanoic acid and ethanoic acid in the Ka values, but then for these acids, you've got the pKa values. Now, converting Ka to pKa would be easy enough if we had a calculator, because pKa is just a negative log to the base 10 of the Ka, but it's paper one, so we don't get a calculator. So, how are we going to be able to compare these? Well, let's take them one at a time. Let's consider these two. So, uh, Chloroethanoic acid has a higher Ka value than ethanoic acid because 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 is a bigger number than 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So the bigger Ka is, remember Ka is kind of an expression where it's uh, the concentration of the dissociated species divided by the concentration of the acid itself. So the bigger that value it is, the more ionized it is. So chloroethanoic acid is stronger than ethanoic acid. So this is stronger. Uh, and it'll be the, the stronger acid. Uh, what about these two? Well, pKa, remember, it's like with pH in that. So like if you have... Uh, this would sort of indicate a higher hydrogen ion concentration, but the lower the pH, the... Uh, more acidic the solution is. So with pKa, what we're looking for is actually the smaller value, because a small pKa would come from a higher Ka value. So hydrogen fluoride is the smaller pKa, so this is our stronger acid pair of these ones. So let's see if we can use those in the table where we don't actually have to then compare uh, this lot with this lot directly. Maybe it's just the one outcome. So this has got chloroethanoic acid being weaker than ethanoic acid, so that bit can't be right. Uh, this has got ethanoic acid being uh, weaker than chloroethanoic acid. Uh, that looks right. And then it's got this bit where it's got hydrogen fluoride being weaker than hydrogen cyanide. Well, that bit can't be right because hydrogen fluoride is stronger than hydrogen cyanide. Come back to this one again. So, yeah, that bit's wrong. So what about this one then? Well, this one's got chloroethanoic acid being weaker than ethanoic acid. That's wrong because we've decided it's the stronger acid. This one does have these two the right way round, the hydrogen cyanide and the hydrogen fluoride, the hydrogen fluoride being stronger. And then this one is a bit more of a mix match. So we've got uh, the ethanoic acid is weaker than the chloroethanoic acid, so that is correct. And the hydrogen cyanide is weaker than the hydrogen fluoride, so that is correct. So even though sort of it's not necessarily in order, we don't know the relative strengths that sort of we just have to be able to infer it that this is the only one which could be correct because it's got both pairs the correct way round, showing hydrogen fluoride as being stronger than hydrogen cyanide and showing chloroethanoic acid as being stronger than ethanoic. So D must be the right answer by process of elimination. Which element is reduced in the following decomposition? So uh, let's have a look. Well, we've got here we've got nitrogen. Now, the hydrogens would be plus one. There's four of them, and of course that would actually have a one plus charge if it was NH4 plus. Uh, so, if it would have a 1 plus charge, your nitrogen must be in a minus 3 oxidation state, and here it's gone to 0. So, that is an increase in oxidation number, so it's not the nitrogen that's been oxidized, because the oxidation number is increasing. Uh, so, look at the chromium. Uh, the hydrogen, has got, it's still plus 1 there, so basically there's no change in the hydrogen. Uh, the oxygens are minus 2 here, they're going to be minus 2 there and minus 2 there. So again, there's no change in the state of oxidation state of the oxygen, so it must be the chromium. So what is this here then? Well, if this was NH4+, plus, this would be Cr2O7 with a 2 minus charge, the dichromate ion. If that's uh, each of those is minus 2, 7 times that comes to minus 14. We need to bring it back to minus 2, so we need kind of plus 12 effectively. So if the chromium are plus 12 overall, they must be plus 6 each. So the chromium is in a plus 6 oxidation state. That's how we get the 2 minus charge left over. Here, uh, we've got free oxygens. That will bring it down to minus 6. We need to bring it back to neutral because there's no overall charge. So the chromiums together must bring it back to plus 6. So each of them must be plus 3. So the chromium is reduced from plus 6 to plus 3, uh, so chromium is our answer, because it's, the oxidation number is decreased, so it's reduced. Which of the following is not a redox reaction? Uh, well, 
if you spot a neutralization, uh, that's a good one to go for because neutralizations don't involve a change in oxidation state. Just to eliminate some of the others, what's going on? Carbon's often a tricky one. The hydrogen is plus one and is four of them, so this carbon must be minus four. The chlorine here is zero, and then in this case, the hydrogens are still plus one, the chlorines are minus one, which now means that uh, to make this neutral overall, that would be, uh, what would that come to? That would come to uh, plus three, uh, that would bring it down to plus two. So the carbon must be minus two in this case now. Okay, and then they all cancel out to make a neutral molecule. And this would be plus one and minus one. Uh, so that is a redox because the chlorines are being uh, reduced to uh, minus one here and here, and the carbon's being oxidized from minus four to minus two. Uh, here it's zero, this is zero. The oxygens are both minus two because oxygen's more electronegative uh, than carbon, whereas here, of course, carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, that's why it's negative. Uh, so your carbon must be plus uh, four to cancel out the two of them because it's neutral overall. Uh, here, oxygen's minus two, so the carbon must be plus two. Uh, we've already worked that through, that's plus two and minus two and zero. So this would be an example of a disproportionation where the same element is simultaneously oxidized and reduced. So uh, the carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide and simultaneously reduced to carbon. So this is an example of a disproportionation. And then in this one then, these might be a bit tricky to work out. Let's have a go though. Not that we need necessarily two. So your hydrogen's plus one, add oxygen is minus two, uh, that's minus two. Uh, those are bonded to the same atom, so there shouldn't be a difference there. So, now minus one of that will cancel out the plus one here, so that's minus one, minus three. So this carbon, I reckon, would be plus three. And then this carbon here, if that's cancelling that out, I'd say those are plus one, plus one, plus one, and then that would be minus three. Uh, overall, the thing should be neutral then. So minus four, minus seven, uh, plus three, plus six, plus seven. So yeah, that seems to make sense. And then when it ends up in the ethanoate, you'll end up with those same numbers. It's just you'll have uh, no plus one on here, but you'll have the minus two left over, and that's why it's then the minus charge. So in this one, there's no change in oxidation state, because still, if I draw the ethanoate ion, then that's still plus three, that's minus two, that's minus two. That's, of course, why we have the negative charge now, because there's one minus left over. Yeah. And then with sodium, be plus one, minus two, plus one. Sodium still plus one there. Hydrogen's plus one, minus two. So there is no change in oxidation state of any of the species here. But spot the neutralization is the, the easy tip. Also, precipitation reactions and not redox reactions. Uh, third, then, the last one on here. So what is the standard half-cell potential of copper if the zero potential reference electrode is changed from the standard hydrogen electrode to a standard zinc electrode? So, of course, these are measured when you've got, like, uh, against a hydrogen electrode, which has 0, 0 0.00 volts. So uh, the one which has the most positive value is your oxidizing agent. So the higher, the more positive this value is, then the better it is as an oxidizing agent, which means it's more easily reduced itself. So copper 2 plus, of course, likes to be reduced to form copper atoms. So our outcome is that we're going to then get it where we have to have the electrons flow to make a positive value. Now, if we left this in the direction it's going and reverse this one, then that would become minus 0 0.76 and minus, that would stay minus 0 0.76 if we had zinc 2 plus ions going to zinc. And then if we flip this equation going round, this would become minus 0 0.34. So overall, that would come to minus 1.1. And that's just not feasible because, of course, a negative E value is like having a positive delta G. Basically, it's not a feasible process. So we need a positive outcome. So the way to get a positive outcome, we need to flip one of these equations. We're going to flip this one. So then what we'd have is the process would be zinc is going to react to give zinc 2 plus ions by losing two electrons. Those copper 2 plus ions are then going to accept those to form copper atoms. And that's the basis of your voltaic cell. Then your more reactive metal donates electrons and your less reactive metal ions then pick them up and form uh, atoms. So this, because we flipped it, would be plus 0.76. And then this remains as plus 0.34. And the total would be plus 1.1 volts. So D would be our answer. And then what's going on here, of course, this is an oxidation. 
this is a reduction so that would be the redox process basically the zinc reacting with copper 2 plus to give you zinc 2 plus and copper 